All right, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Profit Playbook Podcast. This is episode number two. Um, I was forced to take the reins today, so sorry about that for everybody who's going to listen to this one. Um, so, so today we're going to talk about numbers, and we're trying to get in, we're trying to get to the format of what this is going to look like. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna instead of doing like a this week in reselling, we're going to tell you some story from each one of us, good or bad. And so mine happens to be a good one. I had a great sale. Uh, today as a matter of fact so and then we're going to talk about the topic and then we will we'll go over some of the comments and some of the viewer comments i don't think we actually found a question we didn't find it we found a lot of comments guys thank you so much for putting your comments down there that greatly helps the algorithm push this out on youtube and i'm gonna figure out how to get this on uh the other podcast sites so stay tuned for that so if you just want to hear the audio version and don't want to see we were told we did not look good whenever we were zoomed up, so we're going to stay back tonight. <laughs> we might go back to it, though, at some point, because <laughs> I don't buy that. I don't quite buy that. So um, before, though, before we jump into the to the topic at hand, um, let's let's go into that. What what was your sale of the week? So my, so I was driving along, folks, and this is going to tie into it here in a few minutes. And and PayPal pops up. Uh, so I have no, I only have notifications on. So a good friend who is no longer with us, uh, uh, Alabama Picker Dusty, was fanatical about having no push notification whatsoever. So I only have a few of them on my phone, but one of them is PayPal because it's the only way I can see a Bonanza sale because Bonanza doesn't have an app. They used to, and they and they got rid of it. So right, and, and so it pops up. You know, so and so has sent you a payment. The only thing I have a couple sponsorships or whatever that I, I get a few dollars from each month. But, you know, this thing said $224. I knew that wasn't any of those. <laughs> so um, nice thing about that is you're able to hit the notification and it tells you what it was. Um, so there's a good story with this. Every Whenever you think about buying stuff from a reseller, everybody has that same cringe feeling. They go, uh, a reseller is going to sell me the worst stuff. Those, the, so, so Harlan and I have a friend. Um, he's known her since high school. Uh, which is a really long time because we're old. And <laughs> matter of fact, this, um, I've been out of high school 37 years, folks. That's crazy to think about. Um, and the only reason why I even have that number is because my father passed away the last week of my senior year of high school. So I know I was calculating his birthday, how long he'd been gone. And yeah, 37 years. And so she's she's a reseller. She sells on Macari, a little bit on Poshmark. And she buys a lot of stuff. And whenever her two storage units get full, you know, we'll get a call and we got one a couple weeks ago, but she had to cancel. So we're going to go see her again in the ne next couple of days. And she says, Hey, come buy some stuff so y'all can run through your auction or whatever y'all going to do with it because I need the space. I want some more money to go buy more stuff. Um, her husband is, I, she just, she's a stay at home mom or her, her kids are grown on now, but she, so she's, she, like a lot of people, she was bored and started reselling to find, you know, you got to find something to do. And so she's really good at it. She does. She loves. She loves Macari, and she's one of the few people I know that loves Macari. And so I'm. We're going through the storage building, and there's a. It is a controller for an awning for an RV. She's like, I just thought it was interesting. I picked it up. It's I don't know. It's about six by six by four, and it's got the model number, everything on it. Um, I didn't even list it. It was in a box to be listed, and I threw it. And when I left, I told Jacob, Hey, list all this stuff today. Mm -hmm. uh, so he listed it this morning and it sold this afternoon. The nice thing is he listed it on eBay, eBay um, Bonanza automatically sinks. And then a customer on Bonanza bought that. Right. And the, the one thing about Bonanza, somebody, when you start thinking about it, we'll go over the fees in a little while. What are the selling fees on Bonanza? This is why I was thrilled. It's not 20%. It's a lot. It depends on what you have it set up as. I have a 9% plan. I think it's the first tier yep. and just basic, uh, but I have mine set for 9%. Yep. Same here. All right. So that's, that's, that's my great sale of the week. I've had some RA sales, but it's hard to talk about RA because the, an item I found I hadn't seen in three years and it sold pretty quick. So try not to give away too many stickers on that, but, but all the eBay stuff and Amazon stuff, the Amazon stuff is hard to talk about just because you ruin the market. But the eBay stuff, you know, look yeah. up things, models. You, you ruined the market before, so you want to do that again. Um, 
Yeah, electronics right. have model numbers, folks. They are so easy. Um, so I didn't test this on. If anybody wants to know about the awning control, um, if you look at electronics, the very ends of the wires have little covers on them. You can tell if a, if, a, if it's been used. This had never been connected to anything, so this thing was brand new. Yeah, that's yeah, that's really good to, to have that kind of a thing. Uh, I can tell you here, I've got a bunch of good sales this last week. Uh, probably just go with uh, a group of sales. How about more than one sale? Can I give you more than one sale? They're all tied in together. Um, you guys know a couple weeks ago, a couple weekends ago, not this last weekend, but the weekend before, uh, went over to a, a good friend of mine. He's moving to Italy, went over to his house. And uh, he's trying to sell a lot of the things that he's not going to pay to have shipped out there. And he may still not have his stuff shipped out there because uh, it's just going to be too expensive. But that's beside the point. Uh, he gave me, he has a bag, a golf bag full of golf clubs. And over the years, he's bought like three different sets of golf clubs for himself. And what I didn't realize is that he never traded in or even bothered to try to sell his previous sets. So he had a set from like, I'd say seven, eight years ago. Then he has one from like three, four years ago. And they've just been sitting in this bag of other golf clubs that he's accumulated, you know, over the years. So he gave all those to me. And I thought they were just all random golf clubs. I get them home and they're two complete sets plus other clubs. So I got the two complete sets together, cleaned, uh, photographed, really good photographs, listed, and uh, I made on a, a set of Ping G400 irons, uh, $395. That's the total, and then shipping was only like 30 bucks. So, are you are you even a reseller if you don't have a bag full of golf clubs in your in your in your pile somewhere? I'm telling you, uh, I, I, right now, guys, is the time to get golf clubs. But don't just buy every golf club you see. Uh, there's certain brands. Uh, that you should be on the lookout for. Ping is one of them, tailor-made. Um, Nike, they're not in the, the golf club game anymore, so a lot of the clubs you're finding are on the are probably going to be at least six-plus years old. But their but, drivers are still in demand. The, the square head drivers, still are, they're still in certain yeah. clubs because you can't Sasquatch. get them anymore. Yeah, the Sasquatch uh, uh, drivers. Uh, some of their, their vapor um, line, mm -hmm. uh, their, their irons and drivers are going to be uh, fairly good. Uh, you also have Titleist. That's probably one of the biggest names in, in golf. Cobra. That's another brand. Uh, if you're yeah, things like, I got, set, like, I got a, another set I picked up for $5. It was, I bought a woman's set for, and I haven't listed it yet. Just don't ask me why. I mean, I'm selling all these golf clubs. I'm telling you that you should be selling all these golf clubs, but I'm sitting on a complete women's set that looks really good. It, the comps are like a hundred bucks, but I should still get it up, which is something I'm going to do probably tonight when we're done. But I bought that set for 10 bucks. This lady threw in a bunch of these old random clubs. Turns out there was a set of Max Flies. Um, I, I listed those already for like 60 bucks. So, I mean, it just depends on what you're um, looking at, but stick with those major brands Cobra, Nike, kind of fringy, uh, Ping, Tailor Made, Titleist. Okay. Yeah. Callaway. Oh, of course, Callaway. I play Callaway. And PXG. If you could find PXG, uh, those are... are uh, There's really some cool. smaller brands, too. Mizuno makes some good clubs, and they've got some value. There mm -hmm. there's some smaller brands. So, yeah. Yeah. so people are yeah. going to ask, how do you ship them um, in a box? That's a good answer. But remember, post office is going to penalize you. Anything over 30 inches is going to charge you an extra $10. So... Be prepared to do UPS or FedEx. UPS is much cheaper than the, than the post office on golf clubs. Well, now I got to say this though, real quick. I shipped that set of clubs. Well, I said I shipped a set of clubs using Ground Advantage. the The other set I sold, which was the Taylor Made RBZ Rocket Balls, two thirty five, and these were beat up. Okay, I sold them for two thirty five, and they not only uh, you know arrived okay. With ground advantage they received them they left me great feedback uh they were beat up 235 bucks now i have zero cost of goods on uh, either of these sets i made uh over 600 bucks or around 600 bucks after the shipping of course deduct ebay fees and i'm probably down to about 525 but not bad for zero 
uh, in cost. So I'm happy with that. Now, as far as the shipping on these, I, I went to Granger. Now you go to like, I think you go to Supply Hut for your boxes. No, they don't do them that big. Uh, generally, if I need larger boxes, I, I go to U-Haul. Oh, okay. So Granger.com. Now Granger, they have a facility in your area. They have one here in Vegas. Yeah, they got one too. In the stock, they'll have them shipped to their location. And I think these boxes, I picked up 48 by 4 by 4. I also picked up 48 by 5 by 5. And the 48 by 4 by 4s are good for the single clubs. And the 48 by 5 by 5s are good for the sets. So if you have a set of like eight golf clubs, what you want to do is bubble wrap the heads, maybe with a rubber band to keep the bubble wrap on. Uh, put four clubs uh, uh, facing down in the box and then... Uh, four clubs facing up where the handle is of the other ones and they fit perfectly in the box uh the the 48 by 5 by 5 will accommodate your drivers we have they have a bigger golf head to them and uh, for me that's perfect the dollar 25 a box i think i bought 50 boxes and that's, I that's an amazing price yeah so that was a uh, of course i had to go pick them up but uh, they aren't the greatest boxes they really aren't um but, but they, you try to buy them online they're four or five or six dollars a box yeah yeah so really good deal and uh you know something to consider that yeah, was my that's my sale of the week. i'll tell you that do not exceed 48 inches folks it gets very expensive there is a every every shipper over 48 inches the price you get into another price category and so be, even if the box says it's 48 inches, you need to measure it to make sure because sometimes it's 48 and a half and you'll be wondering, it's at 48 and UPS will hit you with those extra fees and everybody complains. They go, you know, you get that adjustment or it's, it depends on who measures it, whether they want to round up or down. Yeah. I always, I always round up. So if it's 48 and a half, it would be 49. So I would take a little bit off the box. Here's a shipping hack. Here's what I would say to do. I would say to keep all the clubs, if you're selling golf clubs, Keep all the clubs in a in a golf bag. If you could find one that came with the clubs you bought or maybe find one cheap at a yard sale, keep all the clubs within the biggest golf bag you can find so you can accumulate as many as you can. Once they sell, then you ship the item. Put 48 by 5 by 5 if you have that box as right. your default, and that's the calculated size box that the buyer is going to be paying based on that those dimensions course what you want to do is weigh all the clubs together add a pound for the box okay so that way you know you have them in a bundle when you're, you have them on the scale and that'll give you the weight for the, the clubs and then add a pound for the box put them back in the golf bag until they sell don't need to have a bunch of golf clubs sitting in boxes somewhere just have them all in one location and then when they sell box them up if the club a lot of these irons aren't 48 inches long okay that's just um, gives you a big enough box to accommodate like woods and stuff like that. Chances are your iron set's only going to be about 40 inches long and you just cut the box down. And guess what? Guess what happens? You may have charged that buyer 30 bucks to ship that set of golf clubs, but it's only going to cost you 24 or 22 because now you've cut the dimensions down to the true dimensions of the box. Now, some people might think that's not a good way to do business. I, I do that all the time. And uh, it protects you from a miscalculation. So uh, well, most if, people don't don't include the cost of the box. You had to pay the box. I mean, it's shipping and handling. And most people don't. Remember, I'm trying to get away from larger items. It's one of the things we're trying this year. And it's not that I'm scared. I don't mind doing large items. It's just that it takes so much time. Print. I like selling printers because of the money on them. But it's it, by the time you've got the box size right and all packed in, you're like 12 to 15 minutes on these boxes where, you know, I'm, I'm shipping small items. It's as, as fast as I can throw them in an 864 box and put a couple air pillows or whatever around them. And so your time is part of it. I, my, my helpful tip with it is when you're doing sell similar and you use calculated, make sure to check your dimensions, make sure you weigh, because I can't tell you how many times I have done a sell somewhere and you get some crazy dimensions and, and it's, and then you're wondering, well, that thing sold before. Why is my item not selling? And it it could be just the significant cost of shipping because the dimensions, or maybe that person's dimensions were in there so crazy because they didn't care because they used a, you know, a flat dollar amount for shipping. 
Whereas you tried to use calculated and it's going, you know, a hundred dollars to ship next door. I mean, if that stuff happens and people have no idea why their items aren't selling and it's right. because you never look at your own items, you never see the shipping cost. So that's, a, that's another one. You know, if, if you're having trouble moving some items, you know, incognito mode, look at your own items and see what, what the cost of shipping is and what that other person sees. Well, I got to tell you though, that's the biggest lesson I picked up from last year. And, and that has everything to do with the, uh, uh, introduction of ground advantage, you know, that, that I think that's the, the best gift for resellers in 2023. Amen. And what it allowed me to do, you know, I, I received a lot of complaints last year. People were saying, Hey, you know, your FedEx shipping is too high. And, you know, it, I go and look at it and I'm like, well, it doesn't seem to be too high. And I'm not sure where these people are actually messaging me from on eBay, but it got me to go in and now I can compare. I have a, I have a ground advantage calculated model uh, or a policy that I've set up in addition to my FedEx ground uh, calculated policy. And so what I do, let's say that 20 pound item, that 10 by 10 by 10 box, I don't just default it to FedEx anymore. I put the dimensions in and the weight, and then I sign it, let's say FedEx. And this is in the app, by the way. So when you um, click done and it takes you back to the, your main listing within the app, it'll give you a range of rates for that particular policy. So it might say that package is anywhere from 10 to 30 bucks. And then I go out and I change the policy over to say ground advantage or to the other one. And I see as a comparison, that one might say 15 to 45 bucks. So I know that theoretically, it may not seem like a whole lot, and you're not really able to, to know what shipping rate is going to be assigned to your buyer, but you know, effectively, you're bringing down the cost of your item by selecting the one that gives you the lowest price. Because a lot of times your buyer is going to do a search, like best match search, and they're going to sort those items by price, which includes your shipping. And if you have the wrong shipping policy or the wrong carrier set up for that item, you're going to be higher than you should be. And you could miss out on some sales. And I'm sure I missed that on a bunch of sales last year. I didn't really realize this for a lot of my items until the beginning of this year. And I made a lot of changes. I went through really all my inventory and just on my phone one night, uh, revised my item and I tried the two different policies to see what would give me a, a, the better price. And I would say 40% of all my listings I had to change from FedEx to ground advantage. It's, it's, it's amazing that we spend so much time building these listings and making listings perfect, no matter what the platform is. And a simple mistake such as shipping can, can ruin all that hard work. You can take the most perfect pictures and blot out the background and, all those specifics and everything you want. But if you miss the shipping and it's too expensive, it makes the item too expensive. I don't care what you're going to do. Chances are you're never going to sell it. And so that's right. That's right. It's so let's do this uh, because we want to try to keep this program weekly to about an hour. And uh, I know that shipping and discussing shipping, there's a lot of good, useful information that we, we just gave you, but it wasn't part of the plan today. So we wanted to talk about fees. Fees. Fees, and, fees, fees. Uh, do you know what you're paying? Do you have any idea uh, what you're paying with any of these uh, platforms? So we talked about Bonanza. Uh, we, I think many of you guys know about eBay. We have Poshmark. We got Mercari. And uh, there's Amazon, right? You know more about Amazon than I do. But uh, I think it's important to understand what you're paying these sites. When you're, when so you're I had somebody reach out from one of my classes. This was um, so if you don't know, I've run a couple of a couple of three training classes teaching people Amazon, and and he told me he's like, you know, I sold very close to you know I was a, a twelve or fourteen thousand difference with more eBay than Amazon, but I made more money on Amazon. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, have you figured out why? He said, oh, I know why. It's promoted listings. I'm like. I'm like promoter listings are not always bad, but it's the, it's a not understanding what you're paying is bad. And he's like, I should have put more of those items that, that could have gone on Amazon on Amazon because Amazon's fees are straight 15%. So let your fees let, understand this. If you promote one cent on eBay, you're paying more than Amazon FBM. And how do I know that? 
because it's 13 and a quarter. The minimum is 2%. That's 15 and a quarter. Amazon's fee on most products is 15%. So you're automatically, everybody thinks Amazon is so expensive and FBA is a little more expensive, but it includes shipping and the handling part. But yeah. if you promote even one red cent, you're paying. I don't think people understand that. And I was one of the people that would, was doing plus one and all this crazy. And I spent way too much money on promoted listings last year. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's got to be some sanity to this because I can tell you that story. And so, so John and I, we're going to, we were talking before the show that we want to make this more conversational back and forth. So you guys can hear how we, how we work through these things. Yeah. So if, if you're an eBay seller selling clothing on e eBay and Poshmark, and you're bound and determined not to promote on eBay, but you're willing to put them on Poshmark, that makes no sense. You will accept 20% from Poshmark, but only pay 13 and a quarter on eBay. So you should be willing to, to promote, what's that? 6.75%, that is math, right? Yes, 6.7, to make those fees even. Get the, I mean, if, if you're willing to take that amount of money on Poshmark, why would you not, you know, bring it apples, apples, give yourself a chance. It's, you know, you could actually promote it 5% and, and pay less on fees than Poshmark and eBay has more traffic than Poshmark. Well, here comes the pushback. You ready? I'm ready. Generally on Poshmark, let's just say you're clothing, selling clothing or shoes, right? Because generally that's what they're known for. You can sell appliances and all that stuff, but people don't think of Poshmark as the, the go-to place for those things. It's usually clothing or shoes is what they're mainly known for. The pushback is with those type of kind of items, you can ask for more money on some of the clothing and uh, for some of the shoes than you can on eBay. Right. And because of that, you're going to find that it's going to offset the additional amount that you're paying for that those fees than if you, you know, just say, okay, I'm not going to sell on Poshmark anymore. Uh, there, there is a trade off there. Anytime you can make more money on the item you're selling, it, it kind of makes it worthwhile paying those extra fees. That, I, I, that's why you don't hear a lot of people complaining about Poshmark all that much. So if, if but if you're like, uh, so the, the example on one of my shows is a uh, store reseller, Kevin, Kevin does not promote at all. He's a clothing seller. So he's paying 13.25%. Uh, it's a sick, you have to raise your price a significant amount. And, you know, I'd like to hear in the comments because, I don't really sell clothing. I haven't sold clothing since 2013 when I got started in this game because, um, you know, my fashion, here's my fashion sense. I'm wearing a t-shirt and I got on cargo shorts. You can't see the cargo. I, I've been so excited that we've got 70 degree weather because I can break out the cargo shorts. Woo. Um, I'd like to hear from you guys, you know, how, how much more money can you get on an item, a clothing item on Poshmark? And is, you know, how much have you done the math? That's, that's my question. Have you done the math to understand what it takes to offset the seven point two, the six point two five percent, six point seven five percent fees that you're paying on Poshmark? So let me apologize real quick for the uh, the interruptions. I did not have my phone set to uh, silent mode, and I should have. So uh, airhead me. So I apologize for that. Uh, it's uh, disrupting to have my doorbell go off. For my so I apologize. Uh, but yeah, you have the other, you know, the other platforms, uh, Amazon, of course, you just talked about 15%, Mercari 10%. Um, of course, I think that's on the other side of the, the spectrum where you're going to get less for your items on Mercari generally than you will on eBay. Correct. Um, so you, it's a trade-off, right? And I think it's more important now than ever to not only know what you're paying these sites, but you really need to understand what you're, you're into your items for, because it, it, you know, if you are into your items for like, for instance, those golf clubs I, I sold, how many people can say they have zero cost of goods? Correct. Not a whole lot, but does it really matter at that point? If, if I'm into it for zero and I fi find a buyer for my item, whether I'm paying 13.25% or 20%, you know, I have a lot of room, more room than someone who's into those clubs for, let's say, $100 a set, right? Um, you know, how much are you trying to make when you're selling these items? What what is your what is your goal? Are you trying to make three extra money every time you buy an item? Are you trying to make 10x? 
And these fees are going to either, well, they're going to prevent you from hitting 10X sometimes, depending on what you're into that item for. So yeah. if, I'm into that, if I'm into an item for two bucks, Beard, you're into it for five. Well, my 10X is 20 bucks, right? And your 10X is 50. So the fees are going to prevent you um, from hitting your goal, but maybe not mine. That makes sense. Yeah, I've always pre preached that you need set of rules, you need it for for items, because you know the more of an item I have, the less money I'm willing. It, you know, so if I've got a hundred of an item, you know, I might take fifty percent return, versus, you know, if, if I've got a three or four one offs, you know, I, you know, I want four or five six times my money to make it worth handling a one off. Whereas, so I, great example when I in 2015 when I was you know just really rolling, really getting FBA going. I picked up some glue sticks. They were at Walmart. Walmart had them all for a quarter. They sold right. for, I think I sold them for like seven dollars and fifty cents. And you think, Beard, right. why did you mess with three hundred glue sticks or four hundred, whatever the number was? I'm like, because that quarter, um, they had no stickers on them. All I did was put an FBA label on them, stuck them in a box. It, it took two boxes because of the weight, and they went to FBA. I never saw them again, and I, I made, I think it was before small and light, so I think I ended up clearing. I think I made like two dollars and thirty three cents or some number in there per, and so you think that's not a ton of profit, but it's not a ton of work, and so I, I think you you've got to be smart and you've got to understand your costs. That's a wonderful point. You got to understand the fees and understand because it tells you where to sell it. If you sell electronics, you can sell or use electronics on on Amazon just as well as you can on eBay. eBay is going to charge you thirteen point two five percent. Um, Amazon's a little different. They charge you 6% in electronic or, or 8%, whatever. It's one of those in the electronics category. Um, PCs, if you're going to sell co computers or video game consoles, 8% on Amazon. There's certain categories like that. that. But if you sell an, a Kindle item, which I think you've got to be approved to sell anything, Amazon charges, oh, are you getting ready for this, John? This is, mm -hmm. take a wild guess if you want to sell Amazon related products like Kindle, what? What percentage fee do they charge you? Five percent. No. You're not anywhere close. What one percent? Forty-five percent. Oh wow. I was in the wrong direction. <laughs> you went the wrong direction. Forty-five percent on Amazon related products. Wow. That's insane. It's insane. I mean, that's I think that's one of the higher fees of any category anywhere. The fees on uh Amazon's products, their own products. Hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, I, I, I know there's, there's a, a lot of folks that are trying to make that transition. And we talk about Amazon a lot, uh, at least in the last two programs we've talked about Amazon, because this is not just an eBay podcast. But I think the reason why more people do not sell on Amazon is because the entry level is so much more difficult. And I think it's it's intimidating. Uh, it, it, if you just look at the, the options, just to navigate through uh, Amazon Seller Central, it's like, I mean, I've been doing it kind of part time over the last three plus years and paying the professional $39.99 fee per month and all that stuff. I don't have nearly the, enough items to justify it, but I've been doing it uh, all this time. And I, you know, find a new item to sell. Of course, you have this drop down and there's so many different options. When you go to just try to set up shipping, it's convoluted as compared to ebay it's very it, it, it is more intimidating now it's funny that's the case because once you start getting in and start listing things it's quite easy you're just piggybacking off an existing listing it might have you fill in you know like five different things what's your ski what do you want to call this thing uh how much do you want to price it for how many do you have and is there a shipping policy associated with it that's it you don't have to put a description, you don't, you know, as long as you put the right condition, of course, I guess that's another one you have to put, but um, other than that, you're good. So it's weird how that's simple, but everything else, when you're setting everything up is like, what's going on here? There's so many options and it just kind of, I think because of that, it's intimidating to folks. So the, the one thing that makes Amazon a little different that, that, that I explained to than other platforms is, they spend a lot of time producing their own content. They put it on YouTube to teach you how to do these things. 
So if you want to if you want to understand what Amazon thinks about it, go watch an Amazon video. Don't watch one of mine. Don't watch one of any other Amazon YouTubers. Uh, Amazon has their own channel. You want to learn, you know, what they think about shipping prep for FBA. Don't worry, they've got a video for it. They got a video on how to do inbound shipping. They've got a video on all these things. But it's you're right. It is sh setting up shipping <laughs> is. And there are little rules about they, they have a lot of quirky rules that, that sometimes they enforce, sometimes they don't. It's, you know, it's well, and, and the fact that, you know, you get these stories. I can tell you uh, from my experience, it's cutthroat. You get on the wrong listing. It's they someone can make your day pretty, pretty bad. Yeah, and I've had it happen twice already. In the, the limited time that I've listed on on Amazon over the last three years, it's uh Quite stressful to to see your health meter go to like yellow, right? Um, and that means that you're pretty much a, close to being suspended, right? Uh, that's 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 what they say. I don't I don't know anybody. Maybe somebody I don't know anybody telling me that their health meter was any. I just don't pay a lot of. You get in your own world, you know. That's the one thing about Amazon. It's hard to talk to others about Amazon because. So everybody's scared of what, oh my God, I can't tell you what I sell. You know, you're, you're going to ruin it. And it's, it, it is definitely a cutthroat world, but it is, it is easier to list. It's got a lot of positives. It's, I find it easier to ship because you can ship bulk much easier. The bulk processes are, are much easier. Um, you know, you don't have to take the pictures. If it's a new item, I like to, con they, they brainwash me. So I like the condition on Amazon. New is new. There's no, there's no new other like new on Amazon has a word in front of it that, that eBay needs to adopt this used like new because Amazon's personal stance. And I a hundred percent agree with it. It's only new once. And if it's, if it's open box, open box is not new. Open box is whatever some eBay seller calls it. If it is not brand new, it should never be new. You, and even on eBay, I hate that that I search for, I filter by new and it shows me all these like news and open boxes. I'm like, eBay, I wanted new. <laughs> I didn't want, yeah, I didn't want to the yard, Same friend of the yard sale. You know, he's got something he's, you know, he's had for, for years, right? But he'll be like, I only wore it once. It's brand new. And I look at him like, that ain't brand new, man. You know, yeah. it's like, does it still have the tags on it? No, it's not brand new. You've used it once. It's used. It's correct. That's used. And but it's like, come on. You know, I don't know if you're just trying to convince some, I guess is what it is. You're trying to convince someone to buy your item at a yard sale, knowing that they're not going to bring it back. And who does that anyway? So uh, right. it just it's just pretty comical. You know, you're in you're in this this game and you hear someone that's not talk about conditions and just kind of, uh, makes you crack up or you go to a yard sale yourself and you're, you know, thinking about buying an item and like, yeah, it's brand new. Well, it looks like it's been open to me, you know, but it's, it's necessary to have both platforms. So I, I don't want anybody to think, you know, beer talks a lot about Amazon. He, he does. Like, so he, eBay is, eBay still has a place. And, and because there's a lot of Amazon is very hands-on with, with price controls and they won't allow you to sell, you know, a discontinued item. Amazon doesn't care. They still, if they can find a reference price for it, they will price, they will price alert you and allow you to sell, you know, so say I've got an item that, that normally costs $10, but they're not mm -hmm. making it anymore. And it can be in whatever category. It could be a toy. It could be an appliance. It could be, you know, and, and I want to sell it for fifty dollars because I got one of the last ones. And if you if you follow the free market with supply and demand, it's 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 very simple. Uh, there is no supply. There is still demand. Therefore, the price will, will rise in that instance. If there is a if there is no demand and a bunch of supply, the price will plummet. You see yep. it all the time, and you wonder, oh my God, it's those it's those people racing to the bottom. Uh, and that that drives me nuts when people say, oh, it's just the race to the bottom. It's not. Folks, it's supply. It's it's the market. There's more sellers. That's more supply. That means the that's downward pressure on the price because in a free market, more supply, and unless the demand is absolutely insanely crazy, it is going to push down the price. And so many people, 
man, how many of us had economic? My economics teacher was the football coach it's <laughs> in high school. So what little bit of exposure we had to economics back then was was uh, lining fields or whatever the heck we were doing. Uh, it was the eighties were a wild place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we talk about the, you know, knowing your fees and all that stuff, but what about knowing your numbers? You know, I think that's important to know where you're at with say your margins. And, you know, you can talk about, you know, your other numbers and other stats and all that stuff. I think, you know, the, the other stats that eBay gives you is just kind of uh, one of those things you kind of look at to just make sure everything seems to be normal. But the main, it doesn't matter to me, as long as I'm making X amount of dollars on a range to me, it's like anywhere between, for me, it's like, am I seeing anywhere between 1200 and $1,800 deposited weekly into my account from my main eBay account? That's what I'm looking for. But as far as the the numbers and knowing your margins, I think that's important. Knowing, you know, um, where you're at, because if your margins are low, maybe that's something that you need to work on. And that could have something to do with your sourcing. And I try to talk about this so often, but I think that's what it all kind of boils down to. I think those who source the best have the best opportunity to really succeed in reselling, regardless of where you're selling. It's it's. It is so everybody treats it as a fun thing to do and they get excited they find items that they've always looked for but you if you've got this it's, it's as simple as a sourcing it starts the whole process if you start bad and buy bad you can't fix it i don't care what else you do a bad buy uh you're looking for ways to cut bait at the end because you just want some of your money back so you can try it again right a good buy on the other end gives you so much flexibility if you if you're priced right you know, it, it opens you up to any of those platforms, but beard, my cost is so great. I can put it on Poshmark. I don't care if they charge me 20%, you know, and that's, that's where you want to be ultimately, because I don't think it's, if you love Poshmark and they've got some of the higher fees, but it's working for you and, and you have developed your business model, man, I, I would cheer you on. And, and cause you are ahead of the game because I don't think, I don't think people understand numbers at all through their business. You know, it's because we're all, most of us are first time business owners. How many people, that's another one to leave in the comments. How many of you guys have ever owned your own business before? Or is this the first one? I, I, I would be willing to bet most people, this is the first one. And right. so we're not, we've worked for, we've worked for others. You know, we've done, you, you can be very successful on the job, but now all of a sudden, man, you're the everything. You're the decision maker, you're the researcher, uh, you're the sorcerer, you're, and it takes a lot of, of mind power and skill to, to develop processes that allow, allow you to be successful. That's why I talk about rules. You know, I'll look up an item on my phone, whether it's at a yard sale or like today, I'll, this is the most mind boggling thing. I looked up something at Walgreens today. It weighed three pounds. Somebody ran that thing auction free shipping and got two bucks. <laughs> I'm like, holy, it was selling in the 16, 17, 18 dollar range. But I guess somebody ended up sniping this thing at two dollars free shipping. I'm like, Oof. yeah, well, you know, those are the sellers that aren't going to last long. The <laughs> ones that just can't figure out. And I'm and I'm not trying to <laughs> not trying to disparage new sellers. Um, because we've all made mistakes like that where we've lost money. Uh, I don't do that anymore, but that was a common mistake when, you know, I started selling. I still or, lose money, by the way. I, did. I haven't, I haven't made that kind of mistake in a long, long time, but I'm yeah. very careful. I'm very careful because it's the pain. It's the pain of making that mistake that you never want to revisit. It's almost like, <laughs> like that feeling of, wow, I cannot believe I did this and now it would have been cheaper if I'd have just thrown the thing in the trash can, you know. Yeah, you've, you've got to make the mistakes, though. That, that's the education in this business. And I would, I would, the person that you need to know your numbers, you need to have a set of rules. But the person who's not willing to take, if you don't take any risks, there's no rewards. And so, if you're not, you know, there's, there's got to be some, you know, that that's one of my other ones is to have eighty percent of my items that sell through within ninety days. 
and the other 20 are long-term items that I'm taking a chance on because I want them the much bigger numbers. Yeah. Um, so that one from the beginning is where that's this, the five dollar item that sold for for two twenty five a day uh, ended up being long term because it took me eight months to get it listed. <laughs> but I'm willing to bet because that that falls into like a seasonal type item that's a uh, part for an RV, uh, the awning, right? The controller for the right. Awning. People are there. Everybody's getting the spring cleaning done right now, and they're getting these things ready because one thing I know about RVs is most of them there are the Bigfoots are good in the cold because they're made in Canada. Most of them are not cold weather vehicles. So what are people doing now? Spring cleaning, sprucing up. Hey, we're getting ready to take these campers out. Hey, let's fix what's not working. And so you got lawn parts. You got if you, if you got anything to do with lawn equipment, you know, just think about what's going on right now. And so that I, that's why I think that sold so fast. Also, there were there was only there was none of them on eBay. And so we I had to go to Terra Peak to find a price on it. That's strange how they found it on Bonanza but not on eBay, how it sold on Bonanza before it sold on eBay. It sold within 12 hours of listing. Right. And it's just, it makes you wonder what is Bonanza doing with that listing that eBay wasn't doing? How right. is it that I, 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 it's hard for me to believe that someone woke up one morning and said, you know what? I need a new controller for my, my R, RV's awning. Let, let me go to Bonanza and see if they have it first. So I wonder how fast, I wonder how fast Bonanza, it had to be a Google, you would think that had to be a Google search because it's a harder item to find. You'd think that had to be a Google search. But what does that say about eBay then w when it comes to Google? Uh, and I heard someone say that they're, it seems like they're focusing more on Google Lens, uh, right. those results, rather than just a general Google search. Uh, you know, is, is eBay scaling back? And that's why I got out of the offsite ads, to be honest with you, um, back early in the year uh, with eBay, because uh, I have information. Uh, you guys watch my channel or maybe you don't, but I've uh, been uh, talking to someone who has inside information through someone that uh, says, get out of it right now. It's a mess. Uh, they're making all kinds of changes. And uh, these changes aren't going to be kind of re resolved until later in the year. And so that's why I'm I'm all the way out of offsite ads. I'm only relying on the offsite that comes from promoting your listing. So you you will get exposure to Google offsite ads when you promote on eBay. But um, makes you kind of wonder, like you know, is it that bad to where Bonanza is now outbidding for uh, the Google exposure, outbidding eBay? That's pretty sad if that's the case. That's my third Bonanza sale this month, which is really good for me. Um, I have 450 listens on eBay, so not a ton. Um, but good on Bonanza, though. You know, my thing is, my thought and has always been, it's kind of like a little joking thing. We joke about, okay, you know, uh, putting items on Bonanza. But uh, for one, it only takes like 10 minutes to set up an account. It automatically ports everything over, you know. Then you eBay. never have to touch it again. It, yeah. it, it, it ports it automatically when you list. And if as long as you're so if you're using pirate ship, pirate ship will bring in won't bring Bonanza in, but it'll bring it'll bring PayPal in. And so that's how I'm shipping Bonanza items is it'll show when I when I do the when I when I tell it to bring in all the items, it'll bring both eBay accounts and the PayPal. It'll check them off. And so when I get back tomorrow, I, if you don't know, I didn't clean up or buy a new house. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm in a hotel room tonight. Because I'm out, I'm on a two day sourcing trip, but when I get home tomorrow, um, I will look at my items that have sold and in Pirate Ship. That's where I'll ship. It's very easy. You don't miss it. That's another that's another great best practice. If you've got two eBay, eBay accounts, it's hard to run. An iPhone can't run two eBay accounts unless you one on the browser and one in the app. You can do that. That's the only way. Um, on a Samsung, you you can use their secure folder. You can run two apps on a, on an on the Samsung Androids, but it's so instead of having to look at that other account to see if it sold something, you know, tomorrow when I get home, I won't even look at it on my phone. I will just, cause I don't want to log into it. I would just, it's only got six items on it anyway. So when I, when I, when I go get the results, if there's something there, it just shows up and I ship it. So you never miss it. Yeah. And, and one thing you got to realize though, with that sale on, on Bonanza, if you don't run that label through Bonanza, then they're going to charge you $2 additional for not running the label through Bonanza. 
and they give you this kind of rates from the shipping. So just something to consider uh, when you're when you're running that label that it's going to cost you two dollars more in fees on Bonanza because you didn't run the label. I'm at, I'm at $190 on that on profit, so I can give them $2. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I get it, but it all adds up, just like it all adds up when you make the sale on all these other sites. Correct. Every fee that you pay, you can kind of, you know, think, ah, you know, $2 is not a big deal. But if you do that 100 times throughout the year, you just lost 200 bucks. So that um, the, that's what got me to this conversation on Wednesday on the live show. And now today it is a is, is when he reached out to me, you know, it was as simple as, you know, your, your, your fees are 22% overall. And it's amazing how fast at the end of the year, if you're not paying attention to that, all of a sudden, what's, what's 8% of $141,000 in sales. That's a big number folks. Yeah. I can't do it in my head because I can barely keep up with $6 and 75 cents. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's that be it, over time these become large. That's why I, was, I started talking to know your numbers. What's what services are you paying for, and are they worth it? I, I, I don't. I'm not here to tell you a service is bad. You know, it, whether it's you know whether it's one of the cross listing services or I I will, I will not go without a repricer. The 30 different repricers. Uh, I use a listing service, and I use I use different services. You know, understand what you're paying for. I, I read Profit First, um, first month of this this year, and one of the exercises was to go through your business account and look at all your re recurring fees. And I canceled four subscriptions. And then someone else in the comments mentioned uh, never split the difference. Um, I read that one in February. Um, that was so. My channel is doing a book of the month. Um, Profit First was January. Never split the difference. Chris Voss was um, February. Next, this coming Monday night, we're going to do um, uh, Kawasaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's been amazing. Um, I've been listening to that while I've been driving today. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in chapter six now, so I'm getting close to done with it. But what an amazing way to think. And, and you know, I challenge you. Develop yeah. develop your overall aptitude of your business. Know your numbers. Under, be in control of your numbers, whatever they are. Own them. You know, if you're happy with them, wonderful. If they, if you need to improve them, you know, make a plan to work on them. But you've got to know them, and then, you know, to continue to sharpen your business mind so that in the future you can continue to make better decisions. Right. And that's where I'm at. I want to make. I feel like, I feel like I'm a good picker. I'm, I'm a, I can, I can, I can sell things. I can do all the things. I feel like I've not always made the best in the in the last ten years. Made the best business decisions. Uh, what's what's good for the overall business, and so that's that's my challenge to myself is to work on that to to continually sharp sharpen my own skills. Yeah, and and I think every every person that's out there that's that's reselling needs to ask themselves if they're into this for the long run, and if it's just temporary until the next thing, then keep doing what you're doing. But if this is something that you really want to make work as a viable business then you, you really need to start developing a business mindset. And that's what, I mean, I'm listening to Profit First right now. I'm not very far into the book, uh, but it is intriguing, right? You, you're learning things that maybe are counterintuitive to what we've been told, all these things about how business accounting works, right? I think that's what that book's about. Now, I'm, I'm learning more as I, as I listen to it, but um, it... I think sometimes we have to listen to advice through books or maybe other resellers uh, that from people who've been there and can pass that on to you. So you're not in a rut and or, you know, the proper path to go down for your business. And just like any YouTube channel that you tune into, like these books. So what, you know, profit first might work great for Scott, but it may not be so good for me. You know, it's good to know that 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 philosophy is out there. Uh, the next book may not be so good for Scott, but it might be just right for me. So you pick, you pick the things that are going to really make your business grow. And um, I think it's not only that, but it's rewarding to that growth is rewarding. Once you uh, learn something that really helps your business out, it's, 
you know, it gets you focused and, and it also gets you motivated to listen to the next one or watch the next channel, that type of thing. So yeah, Grumpy John had me, he said that built a sale really, really revolutionized the way he thought about business. And so I listened to that one, that one, I'm challenging myself. So to do one per, per month with the, with the channel and then three personally, three books a month. And so that was one of my extra ones. It did nothing for me. I, I understood that I created a job for myself. And I was not looking to build a business that I'm going to sell or anything. I, I knew all that ahead of time. And so, but I understood what the book talked about and I understood built to sell. If you want to sell a business, you have to be out of it. You know, you have to build a business with procedures and, and because the, the whole part of the business can't be you. I mean, and most reselling businesses are that way. So it's right. probably John's a little different. You know, he's got employees and he, he's the, He's basically just a CEO now. He's he, he shakes hands and kisses babies. And that's where you want to be, right? And now, now maybe not everyone wants to be there. I mean, some people enjoy the, the thrill of the hunt, um, listing the items. They enjoy every aspect of reselling. But as far as not creating your a job for yourself, running your own business, ideally you want to be able to, to automate this to where you can step back and still be able to make money from the business. That's right. where I want, but I mean, but that's, that's way down the road for me. I don't know. You're catching up with me in age. You ain't that far behind. You better hurry up. Yeah, I may run out of time. I, you know, I was, I was having this, this uh, conversation with Archie, you know, we're talking about, you know, what are you going to do in 20 years? Uh, when we're, I mean, I'll be 20 years, I'll be 70, you know, you'll be in your mid seventies, right? Yeah. We want to, I'll be, I'll be seven, almost in 20 years. I'll be 75. What, what kind of retirement do you have set up? Do you have retirement? If once you hit retirement age, are, are you going to be in a spot to where you're going to be able to say, you know what? I'm tired. I just want to be able to um, relax and enjoy the rest of my life and not have to worry about when eBay wants me to ship or uh, worry about returns or dealing with uh, just nonsense. The part of the, the business where we say flipping ain't easy, that part of it. I don't know if I want to do it beyond, and I enjoy reselling. Don't get me wrong, but there's so many things in my life that I want to do. And I want to know that I can take care of my bills. Um, every reseller really needs to take a look. Do you have, and some of you guys are retired out there, already have that and still resell. I get it. Um, but someone told me, Archie told me, I don't see you not reselling. But for me, I, I think maybe there there is a world where I just don't, resell. Um, and I have sort of a plan. I, I have a retirement from my previous job in the corporate world. I, I have that, but I can't take it until I'm 67. So I got another 15 years before I can even dip into that. And so I guess the question is for, for not only you, Scott, but others out there, um, what's your plan for that? So that's what Rich Dad Poor Dad has been teaching me that I, I reminded me how bad I've been with money and, and, you know how I've, I've lived like they tell you to live and it's just completely wrong. I have, I have no retirement. And so I uh, focus it on getting rid of the debt. Now we have a car payment and a house payment. That's it. The car payment will be done by the end of the summer. And very fortunate that um, Harlan's brother was refinancing his house. And I'm like, yo, send me his number. I need to refinance this house. So our, we took the house payment, the house from 27 years down to 15. Mm. And that was, Four years, or three or three, three years ago, four years ago. Anyway, we've got we've got eleven and a half years left on the house, and so it's it's going to do the debt snowball thing. All the money that was going to the car is going to go to the house payment because I'm going to pay down and get out of the house. And then Kawasaki talks about purchasing assets, you know, changing the things you buy and the thing in your. And so I'm challenging myself to learn. Some of my next books are going to be learning those kind of things, you know, catching up with, you know, learning about learning a lot more about real estate, learning more about small, small cap stocks, learning the things that I have no clue about now. So so that I, that I can have money in the next few years, start, you know, my, my money, making money for me. So I'm starting to prepare for that now, real late in life to do that. But it's now I don't think it's ever too late, you know. The first, the first thing is to assess your financial situation where you're at. So we're going, we're working hard to get out of debt. The, and the, the mortgage, I, I consider that just debt like anything else that needs to go. 
Yeah, keep your keep your 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 bills low as possible. I know in the, the day of inflation, uh, where things are just going up in price, it's it's easier said than done. But uh, it's keeping your bills as low as possible, eliminating, like you said earlier, unnecessary expenses, keeping that low, and it all adds up over time. Um, and and uh, you know, for me, it's if I'm 70 years old at some point. You know, am I going or 67 when I collect retirement? I want it to be optional. I want it to feel like I don't have to do this anymore. Right now, I have to. Uh, I have to resell. A lot of a lot of people think, well, you're making money on your channel. Look, I only make like 800 bucks. Uh, I, this just full disclosure, I make about 800 bucks on average. Uh, some some months I have better, you know, success. But generally, it's about 800, eight or 900 bucks is what I'm making off of YouTube. That ain't paying my bills. And uh, if you compare, you know, uh, between eleven and fourteen thousand dollars in sales at a fifty percent margin, then uh, that's where the the bulk of my money is coming from. That's helping me uh, get through. And I want to make sure that by the time I'm seventy, that uh, you know, it's if I do resell and want to deal with eBay, if eBay is even around or whatever site is the pro prominent site. Uh, when that happens, that um, it's optional and it's not something that's necessary. And if it's not necessary, what steps do I have in place that's going to sort of automate this income to where maybe I have maybe I have employees by that time? Maybe I built this up to where it's an actual business. Yeah, that's what I was exactly going to say that that uh, that you know building a a base income into this where you can have you know I I really did not do the, I focus so much more when, when you're in a job that you hate and you've worked for restaurants for 25 years, you know, I spent 10 years of living how I wanted to live and making up for working 70, 80 hours a week for somebody else for, and I, I should have been smarter than that, but you know, you get so consumed with, well, you feel guilty at first because, oh my God, I'm off on holidays for a change. Holy heck. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't realize people didn't have to go uh, work every Thanksgiving and it's, but I, I think that's going to that's part of my thinking, too, is some change in that where, you know, there will be where, you know, I could hire if it's part time help or whatever it is, someone that, that to put some wholesale into this so that, that you know, something that just goes and goes without 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 a lot of, you know, hey, we're going we're gonna, we need these, we'll order these and they'll, mm -hmm. they'll go in, you know, building some of that is also taking care of yourself in the future, I believe. So. But, yeah. but you've got to know it's, this is all about the numbers. You've got to know what you need, if, what your plans are for the future, what you need in the future. How are you going to get there? If, if you're not paying attention to all these things, you know, time flies. Folks, if you don't realize this or not, by the time y'all listen to this, we're talking mid-March. We're getting to mid, we're getting to the first, we're getting double digit days of March. Yeah. You guys, you've lost two out of 12 months, two, two and a half months. We're going to be almost gone out of this year already. It's insane to think. And with the craziness coming by the end of the year, you know, it's a leap year. So what does that tell you? That <laughs> October, November are going to be nuts. Those those days are going to fly by because the the chaos and the insanity that's coming. So yeah, it's like that that uh, bumper sticker that I, I showed you. It, it was on someone's car. I got behind them. I was sitting at a light and I'm looking at it and it says, um, it says large meteor for 2024. It looks like a presidential bumper sticker. It says large meteor for 2024. And it says underneath ended already. <laughs> and it's like, okay, <laughs> that's the perfect bumper sticker uh, for 2024. Cause it's only two months in and it's been crazy on all kinds of different levels. So, you know, you go outside, and you go to the store, it's crazy. You turn on your TV, it's crazy. Uh, you try to sell anywhere on online on eBay, especially, it's crazy. So, yeah, I yeah. can make you a promise for this year that everything's going to change. But I can promise you that any platform you sell on are already planning changes for you for the end of the year. You don't know about, you know, they, you know, they don't just, they're not sitting here in, in September going, oh my goodness, we got to set out a, a a winter update. They're working on that now. And so yeah. the, the way the every one of these platforms does it, they all have you know, changes and tweaks they make that affects all of us, you know, some platforms more than others, you know, Amazon's making crazy changes to fee structure right now on, 
on FBA shipments coming in, large FBA shipments, costing these big sellers a lot of money. And, you know, it's quietly happening. These folks are not on social media like, like a lot of eBayers are. And so, you know, Amazon kind of gets a pass when they're, man, they are, they are the elephant in the room when it comes to fees <laughs> and, okay. and forcing their will upon you. Well, and, and speaking of crazy things, just know over the next, what, six months between now and October, I've been told that the app is going to go through a lot of, um, I would say changes, turmoil. There's going to be some things going on with the app. Um, yeah, the soul page changed this week for me. Does, does your soul change on the back of the app changed? It, you know what? From one, it's weird. On the same phone, I will log into one account and see uh, a totally different version of the same app. Yeah, because it, it, it changed to that where those boxes instead of the way it used to be. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I don't know why that is, but uh, eBay is making changes. And, you know, they should be proactive making changes. My, my only contention with eBay making changes is the way they do it, not the fact that they're making changes. It's simply this. Make changes sort of on a like another plat like another um, Could you test? Speed, huh? Could you go back to what they used to do? They used to terrorize Australia. You've got a market down there. Let's there you go. Let's go back to testing on Australia. Sorry, there are just going octopus, but uh, you, you know, know that, maybe, maybe clone clone site of the the or right. clone. You know, make a beta app and make all the changes there, and then you know after you've tested it with you know your employees or have a team that tests it, then push it over. And then instead of having us do beta testing from day one, that's the biggest thing that problem I think uh, that there is with because eBay. changes are not bad. Amazon's app started out very, when I first started, Amazon seller app was very basic. Right. Now, now it has just absolute tons of menus and you can do so much. You can put yourself on vacation mode to the app. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with the app and you can change the, the view from your sales for seven days, seven days, 30 days last year. You can, I mean, you can see a lot of information on, I think the only thing you can't do right now is you cannot uh, get buyer initiated cancel. I don't think you can, you still can't do that. Nor can you get ungated through the app. Yeah. It makes you, it, it opens up to another, you're leaving the app. No, it, well, actually it, it tells you, it gives you an error message saying you cannot ungate yourself uh, through the app. And I showed uh, a couple guys that we're, we're outsourcing today, looking at stuff at the uh, closeout convention here in Vegas. And uh, I showed it to them like, wow, I didn't know you couldn't un ungate to the app. No, nope, you can't. So my question for you is those guys at the, at the, was he carrying his big bomb with him? Uh, it was one of those guys. I said, I don't want to put him out on the podcast like that, but yeah. <laughs> I was. He, he, he might have been shopping for one, but he wasn't carrying one. I bet he had a vape pen on him though. He might have. He might have. <laughs> but, uh, you know, tune into Beard's channel uh, for his lives on uh, Wednesdays and Friday nights because that's where these guys hang out. And for those of you who enjoy the, the Amazon conversation, there's a lot of Amazon sellers on that uh, panel that but usually we'll, you know, more information on that. For it's sure. a great place to get questions answered. You know, uh, John shows it the same way. We both do two lives a week. And so you can, if you've got questions, you know, and you want to know, Hey, what about the, can you ex in more in depth on this number? I don't get it. Can you explain it? Tune into one of our live shows. So the question on there, we'll be more than happy to, since we're not live on here, other than with each other, it's, you know, it's, we don't see the questions in real time, but any of the live shows, uh, I'll be more than happy to go in depth in my panel. Anybody who's on the panel can answer the questions too. Uh, Grumpy John's on there every now and then on my Wednesday show. I mean, dude runs a five, six million dollar Amazon business and will answer any question you got. I mean, he lays it out there and, you might not like the answer you get, but he's going to tell you that what he believes to be the truth. Uh, yeah. And the caveat, though, with it all is not just you're going to be hard pressed to find anyone who's really an expert in anything that we're talking about. And with that said, I'm not an expert. Uh, Beard's not an expert. We're just giving you our own experiences. I know someone had put a, met, a comment in uh, the last video saying so says the so-called eBay expert saying about the. Somehow I alluded to being an eBay expert. I'm nowhere near being an eBay expert. I can only tell you what works for me. And I think 
uh, you can say the same. Uh, the, w the information that you're sharing has been successful for you, right? So why not why not uh, share that with people if it can help and benefit others? And that's all we're trying to do. Because the you know the the one thing I told you before that we we hit the record button was I really think it's beneficial for people to see you know conversations that go back and forth because how many people in your life can I mean I can. Joni, my wife has, has watched me resell for the last 10 years, watched a YouTube channel and done all this. And she'll see on her phone, she'll get a notification. That's pretty cool. It's sold. And that's her. That's all I get. Yeah. <laughs> she's happy something sold and she's going back about her life doing whatever she does to her and the dogs. Yeah. And, and could care less about resell. She loves that I resell. She loves that I'm happy. But how many of you guys have that person, anybody in your life that you, you can run things by? And so that's what. That's what my whole purpose is the resale of my channel and is to help each other tell tell people what I see. There's so much opportunity out there. You're not you're not gonna ruin the world because somebody knows, oh my God, he just told the promoted listing secret. <laughs> <laughs> now, that said, um, there are some things we can't talk about. Uh, and that the one thing is for the most part sourcing. Um, you know, we can generally talk about yard sales generally talk about different things uh, like thrift stores and uh, liquidation pallets and stuff like that. But you get so many times people contacting me through the comments or email, asking me to you know, throw them a bone. You got to do your own homework. You, that's part of the, the dues you have to pay. You're not going to start out out of the gate knowing where to go to buy stuff. And you're going to go and find uh, that most of the places you go aren't going to be worth buying from. But you learn as you go. But I can tell you the process. I mean, I can tell you, I can explain to you my process. Um, I hadn't done retail arbitrage for a, what, a year, year and a half. It's been a while. Yeah. And I've been real hot, hard on it for the last six weeks. And it's wherever you're at, whether it's a thrift store or it's a retail store, or wherever it is, um, I'm looking for items in a certain, and then I scan 10 items around it. Every time I go to a store, I, I don't leave until I scan 10. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's the same ones because I forget because I'm old. And but, you guys notice he's not at home right now. That's not his house. I don't think yeah. people people don't want to do. Are you willing? So last night I was shipping till 3 a.m. because I had taken a nap. Me and Phoebe took a nap in the recliner. If y'all don't know, Phoebe's uh, one of my dachshunds. Uh, after dinner, I sat there and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. It's two hours later. What the heck? <laughs> and so I couldn't go to sleep. So I'm like, I got to ship these packages in the morning before I leave. I'll just go ship them tonight. And then I was still not tired. So I listed all my stuff. It was three o'clock in the morning. I finally went to bed. I got up at 7 a.m., um, shipped the two more items that came through because they, if you don't, the cutoff time on all, most platforms is midnight Pacific, which is 2 a.m. my time. And so they sold one of them. I had to go get at the building, is why I had to go do it. Mm -hmm. Actually, both of them were at the building. But anyway, and so I got in the car, I dropped them off at the post office uh, on my way out of town, and I got here. What about 28 stops? And I got to the hotel 40 minutes before we started recording this. And then I still got to go get some to eat. It's, I don't know what time it is. So it's how many, items, that over, that this is a two day trip. How many items do you anticipate finding between from the, from the start to the finish? Two to 300, know? maybe 400 items. And uh, wow. it's going to be probably 70 stops by the time I get home. Tomorrow uh, night. And then time to turn the, computer back on to do another live show. So guys, that tells you right there, there's product out there to find to resell, regardless of the platform that you're selling it on. So I think that's a good place to leave off. Um, I think it was another very, very good episode. I uh, want to thank Definitely. you guys for being here with us this week on episode two of the Profit Playbook podcast. And that's a tough one. We could just call it, call it PPP, right? <laughs> but uh want to thank you guys for being here and we will talk to you and see you on next week's episode don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on uh, what we discussed today until next time take care everyone